Hey everyone, welcome back to my video blog where I talk about Azure, data services, and a little bit of professional development. Today I'm going to discuss getting started on the newly generally available Apache Spark as a part of Azure Synapse Analytics. Another great option for data engineering and preparation, uh, data exploration, and machine learning workloads. Now, without going too deeply into the history of Apache Spark, I'll start with the basics. Essentially, in the early days of big data workloads, uh, really a basis for all machine learning and deep learning, uh, leading into advanced analytics and AI type use cases, uh, we would use a Hadoop cluster and move all of the data. Uh, we would load that across disk and then you would move it from disk to disk, you would have a cache layer and essentially do your workloads and then you would uh, publish your output. The problem was that the disks were um, really inefficient. It was a bottleneck because moving data across spinning disks uh, just is too time consuming. And so the creators of Spark said, hey, why don't we do this in memory and remove that bottleneck from disk? So they developed Apache Spark as an in-memory data processing engine as a faster way to process those massive data sets without having to go back and forth to disk. Now, when the Azure Synapse Analytics team wanted to make sure that they were offering the best possible data solution for all different kinds of data workloads, Spark gave them um, the ability and the flexibility to be able to offer to customers who are already using this open source solution, as well as uh, give more capability around big data workloads uh, that may not be as efficient in something like our massively parallel processing uh, SQL data warehouse, um, formerly known as Engine, right? <clears throat> So uh, they said, okay, we're going to offer this in. It's also gonna give us more flexibility with, with regard to machine learning and data science workloads. And we're gonna add this into uh, Azure Synapse Analytics as a more complete data solution offering. Behind the scenes, the Synapse team is managing many of the components that you would find in an open source Spark cluster deployment, okay? so. Apache uh, Hadoop Yarn is for the management of the clusters where the data is being processed. Um, Apache Livy is for the job orchestration. Uh, Anaconda is a package manager, uh, an environment manager. Uh, there are a bunch of Python and R data science distributions and a collection of over 7,500 open source packages that will help you increase the capabilities of the Spark cluster, right? So essentially, if you wanna try a different language or uh, you know there are, are known algorithms for data science workload and things like that, you'll find those in, a, in Anaconda. So now, from an architectural standpoint, uh, simplified anyway, you can see in the image that we're using Azure Blob and Data Lake Storage for the basis where the data itself is stored as your source data or where it can be sent to after processing as your sync, as among other options, right? That's the flexibility of the Azure platform is that you've got these capabilities uh, to connect into a whole bunch of different compute and storage options. Now, Yarn, as you can see, is the orchestration layer between the storage and the compute. And, you know, from the libraries that you can deploy to the compute for various job types, types such as Spark SQL, which is closer to ASCII SQL than it is to T-SQL. But then you've got uh, Spark MLib, which is for your machine learning libraries, and GraphX for your graph database workloads. Now, looking at the Synapse environment and how this gets used, right? First thing we're going to do is we're going to connect into our Synapse workspaces. Now, this assumes that you've created it in the portal already, uh, but the direct link is web.azuresynapse.net. So you'll click connect into your Azure Active Directory, your, your subscription, and then your workspace name. And as we connect in, we will see the new uh, workspace home. It's been updated recently and there's, there's uh, some great stuff here. 
you know, that's for a different video. Uh, today, we're just going to show connecting into uh, a data source, running a quick operation on it, and then we'll go from there. Over here uh, in your data hub, right, you've got the ability to add data sets. And so if we create um, a new data set by browsing the gallery, this gives us a whole bunch of uh, sample data sets that are loaded in. Uh, you can also go into your knowledge center and, and pull them out that way, but you can go directly in here. And for this sample data set, what we're going to do is we're going to pull in our New York City Taxi and Limousine Commission yellow taxi trip records. And so this is a collection of data um, that, that we are, are able to use to be able to do some, some common workloads. And so it goes in, it gives you some description about the data and all that kind of stuff. And so I'm going to go in, we're going to add our data set. And it will tell us in just a minute here that it's connected. And so you can see that I've already loaded the City Safety Boston data set, and now I've added in the uh, New York City TLC yellow. From here, we're going to create a new notebook, and we're going to load the data to a data frame. So the first thing you'll notice is that it creates a notebook for me. It puts in the code automatically to connect in, and it tells me that I have to select a Spark pool to attach before running to the cell. Now, I have one created called my, my Synapse Workspace Pool or Synapse WS Pool, and it will automatically tell me you know, that, that my pool is not started, I don't have an active session, and it will start automatically. And so you have to create a Spark cluster before you can do this. Uh, so go ahead and, and create that Spark cluster beforehand, or you can create it on the fly as you need to. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to hit our run cell button. Now, this is going to connect into our uh, cluster. And you can see that I'm waiting for this to start. Now, this is going to take a second, so we're going to fast forward to that. OK, now you can see that it is ready. It tells me what my pool is. It will expire after X amount of inactivity. It gives me all that information. And now I'm starting my Apache Spark session. So it took about two to three minutes for this to start up. My cluster is now running and I'm waiting for the data to be loaded. Now we've got our job execution in progress. It's showing us what the executors and how many cores we're using. We can expand this to show what it's, what it's doing from a job perspective. We've got a bunch of tasks running. Now it's running through each of the jobs in sequence. You can see that the time it's taking to run these jobs. And there's our output. Okay, so the first time that you run a job, if, you're, if your cluster is asleep, if you will, or on standby, it's going to take a few minutes to get it spun up. But once you have that all spun up, now it's, it's much quicker to process any of this. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a look real quick at the schema of our data set to know what these all are. So just a very simple command, uh, df.print schema and run. So that's a shift enter or you can hit the little arrow there, the little green arrow. And so now we're looking at what the schema looks like. Um, we've got the overview of, of all the columns. Um, you know, we've got some doubles, we've got some strings, we've got some timestamps. And so, you know, the, the various pieces of that. Now, the next thing that we're gonna wanna do is start analyzing our data. So we've got a lot of options on what we want to do. We, we probably want to load this data into a database, a database if we so choose, uh, to be able to do more of the SQL operations on it. Okay, so now we have the data loaded. We know what the schema looks like. So if we want to do any further operations on it, we can. Now, a, a couple of things you want to keep in mind uh, is that for our cluster, uh, we, we want to make sure that it's going to shut down so we can stop our session here, right? And that will stop your cluster. It will get rid of any of the data that's in memory, it gives you this warning here, right? Because we're not persisting the data. We haven't moved it to a table. Uh, we haven't moved it to a file or anything like that. And so if we stop this, we're going to lose it all. Uh, we can rerun the, the, the notebook later and reload it if we want. Um, but just for argument's sake, we're just going to stop it here. And then 
the cluster will shut down and we're no longer incurring any uh, additional costs from the compute. So hopefully that gives a pretty good overview of what the environment looks like, uh, where Spark fits in the big picture, and how you might be able to take advantage of it for your other data workloads that you may come across. I hope you enjoyed this video. I really appreciate all the support. Uh, we've got over 200 subscribers. Uh, really, really appreciate uh, any opportunity that you have to share these and like them and comment. Uh, love having comments, love having uh, questions and those kinds of things. So keep them coming. Thanks again for watching. Have a great day.